All right, eight dash one. Introduction to vectors. Okay, so we're going to talk about vectors here. So there are two um, two things we're going to look at here. We're going to set out our paper in, in two columns here, and we're going to write something down in the middle. So on the left side, we're going to have vector quantity. And so this is a quantity, a vector has magnitude and direction. All right, now we also have a scalar quantity, quantity, and um, this has magnitude and size. Okay, so let's do some examples and see if we can figure out what it is we're talking about here. So, we're going to say a boat travels 15 miles per hour. Now, we have to decide, is this a vector quantity or a scalar quantity? Notice how this has, uh, we're talking about a boat that's traveling 15 miles per hour. Do we know what direction the boat is going? No, we don't. Okay, so that means this is a scalar quantity. We don't know the direction, so it's not a vector. Let's look at another one. A hiker walks 15 paces due west. All right, so now we have a, a hiker who's walking 15 paces. So that's uh, the magnitude and a direction due west. So this is a vector quantity. Let's do a few more. Person um, is way uh, person's weight on a scale. So a person steps on a scale. Person's weight on a scale. So you step on the scale. <clears throat> um, would this be magnitude and uh, or size, a scalar quantity, or a vector quantity? Hmm. This one would actually be a vector quantity because we have the direction, which is down onto the scale, <clears throat> and um, we have the person's weight and we have the distance that the scale compresses. So this is a vector quantity. Car driving sixty miles per hour fifteen degrees east of south. So here again we have a car that's driving a certain magnitude, 60 miles per hour, in a specific direction, we've got a vector again. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit more about vectors. So, uh, or about vectors at all. Here we go. Vector. A vector <clears throat> can be symbolized in a few different ways. So one is I have both points of a vector, so A, B here, and um, I put this little vector sign on top of it. Um, it can be listed as A, just a, a lowercase letter with a vector sign on top of it. 
Sometimes you can see it without a vector sign on top of it, just a lowercase letter. And then sometimes you can see it as a lowercase letter that is bolded. So you can see vector written at all of these different ways. And the vector in question here that we might be talking about is vector AB. So we have a vector that looks like this. Here's point A. And here is point B. Notice how I put the point on the other side of the arrow. The arrow points to the, the ending point here. And so this would be point B. And um, this A here, the initial point, Um, this is called the tail. And then B here, this point, this is called the terminal point. And also known as the head or the tip. So that is the anatomy of a vector. Excuse me. There we go. So let's look at um, a vector on a coordinate plane, or not a coordinate plane, but on um, the north, south, east, west uh, plane here. So if I were to have a vector that starts right here in the at the origin, so we've got the vector is going to be in standard position. And the vector is going to go, let's say it's going to go this way. And here's the end or the terminal point. So this length here, this is going to help us with the magnitude. The length equals the magnitude. The length is going to tell us what the magnitude is. And then the direction for this um, example, the direction is coming off of this x-axis here. But um, we're going to see that the direction can be um, measured from a variety of different places. but we're going to measure the angles as the direction. And it might be from this axis or this one. It can be from a variety of places. All right, so here's a vector. Now let's talk about bearings. So um, we're going to do a quadrant bearing. So let's go ahead and draw this once again. But this time, we're going to label what these directions are. So when we go up, this is going to be north. Down is south. To the right is going to be east. To the left is west. <coughs> so, oh, I forgot I put that in the wrong spot. OK, we'll, we'll move that in a second. OK, there's going to be two different kind of bearings that we're looking at here. One is a quadrant bearing and one is the true bearing. So if I were to measure, if I were to have a vector that is going this direction, this distance from here to here, or this angle, I should say, this angle, we'll say this is um, 145 degrees. This is the true bearing. So this is measured um, counterclockwise from north. So this is the north um, here. And then we go counterclockwise from north. We measure that angle, 145 degrees here. This is the true bearing. So it's measured clockwise 
from north. Um, now this we're going to say is 145 degrees. Now um, if it's less than 145 degrees, let's say it's less than 90 degrees or you know somewhere that's less than 100 degrees I should say, then um, another example of what that might be is say um, let's say it's 25 degrees from north we say 0 25 degrees so it's from if it's from north if it's a true bearing um, and it is below 100 degrees it'll start with a 0 0 25 so that would be like right here right okay now um, this quadrant bearing here I forgot to move this down this is um, if I measure the angle from a different uh, bearing from so if I'm not coming from north clockwise then I could come from south here and this angle here would be angle phi and this angle PHI is 35 degrees so here we have 35 degrees but notice how it's not coming from north it's coming from south and it's going from south to east and so we say this um, as 35 degrees east of south so notice how we're going east we're going to the right from or of south we've gone that direction and so um, we can also say that's south east east of south and southeast are um, interchangeable and the way we write this is we say south that's where we're coming from 35 degrees east so we've got we're we're started from south we go 35 degrees to the right which is east so this is the way we would um, say this angle here um, as a quadrant bearing um, and not as a true bearing all right let's do some examples So um, what I want you to do is just read this, or what we'll do, should we do, should this be a wee try maybe? So let's put an angle right here, let's say um, at um, 65 degrees so from north, so from here to here is 65 degrees. So let's decide what are, uh, how would we write this um, as a true bearing? I'll give you a second, go ahead and like pause it or something, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so um, here's how we would say this. Since this is a true bearing coming from north clockwise, this would be 0, 65 degrees. Let's try, um, let's have you guys do one. Uh, let's do a we try here. Let's put an angle right here. And let's say this is, uh, what, like 40 degrees from south? So remember, this is north, east, south, and west for all of these. North, east, south, west. Okay. So see if you can figure out how you would say this. Think about it for a second. <coughs> see where I'm starting from. I'm starting from south. So I know I've got south and I'm going to the left, so I'm going west. And I'm going how far in, in my degrees here, or what, um, what bearing do I have here? Um, 40 degrees west. 
So I've started south, I've gone 40 degrees west. So that would be my answer for that one. We got a true bearing. All right, so let's have you guys do one by yourself, all the way by yourself. And then we'll go on to the next part. So let's say I've got north, east, south, west. Let's go ahead and do, let's do one, let's do one right here. Let's say we've got 50 degrees from south to east. Okay, so you try this one, pause it, try to do the work, and then come back. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you paused and you did the work. And um, I've got south, I start south. I go 50 degrees east. So hopefully that is the answer that you got for that one. And let's move on to the next part of this. There we go. We're going to do some other kinds of examples. For this one, you are going to draw a bearing here. So um, I'm going to have this vector. So this is example A. A vector, and notice how it's going to be a bold lowercase a. That's my vector. And this equals 20 feet per second at bearing. So we're drawing this vector. Well, I should say draw this vector. That might be best, right? At um, a bearing of 30 degrees, so 0, 30 degrees. So I know that this is <clears throat> a special kind of bearing that is your um, true bearing, right? And so let's go ahead and draw this. So let's start with our north, south, east, west. North, east, south, west. Now, um, <clears throat> this is going to be helpful to have a ruler. Hopefully you have a ruler on hand. Um, if not, then we have to think about s some way to, um, to measure this. So we've got um, 30 degrees. So I'm, I'm going to um, estimate my 30 degrees because I'm going to assume that you don't have a protractor at home. So I'm going to estimate 30 degrees from north is about about like that, about a third of the way. So here is my, my vector is gonna be somewhere, I'm gonna draw this vector line lightly. So I'm gonna have this line that's gonna be something like that. So I'm drawing it lightly, because now I have to say 20 feet per second. So this should be 20 feet long, right? So um, that's the distance, that's my magnitude, is um, 20 feet long, um, but, I don't want to draw 20 feet. I would need a whole bunch of paper and I have to s staple it together or whatever, and that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scale. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to go to my centimeters. So let's go metric here. Oh, do I not have centimeters on this ruler? Drat. All right. So I don't have centimeters, so I'm going to go with um, quarters of an inch. So if I were to go with quarters of an inch, I would say each quarter of an inch, let's say equals four feet. So I, so I need to go 20 feet. So let's say a quarter of an inch equals four feet. So that's my scale here. And so how many quarters of an inch do I need to get to 20 feet? Or how many four feet do I need to get to 20 feet? Um, and that would be five. So I need five quarters of an inch. So I go one, two, th three, four, five. So that's at an inch and a half is right there. And then I'm going to draw my vector nice and strong. So 
So this distance here is one and one quarter of an inch, one and one quarters of an inch. So that means I know that I've got five one quarters, uh, one fourth of an inch in here, and each one of those represents four feet. So um, that means that this vector is a scaled version of 20 feet per second at a bearing of 030 degrees. Let's do another one. So here's my vector, vector V. This is 75 pounds of force. There's my magnitude at 140 degrees to the horizon so as you're if you're following along in the book they throw out all of these different terms here and some of them they don't really explain very well so to the horizon means from east Oh, sorry, counterclockwise from east. Counterclockwise from east. So, let's draw this. So, let's see, we've got uh, north up here, east over here, south down here, and west over here. So here's, I've got my east starting right here, right? So I need to go 140 degrees from east. So that'll be, here's 90. And here's 180, so I want to go about right here. That's about 140 degrees from east. So it's going to go out this direction somewhere. So I'm going to draw that lightly. And I'm going to say, okay, 75 pounds. So I have to, I have to decide on a scale. So this was um, 140 degrees. Oh, it looks like this one we forgot to write uh, the 0, 30 degrees here. So this is 140 degrees. And um, let's say 75 pounds of force. So let's say every 5 pounds is, um, no, not every, let's say 25 pounds is an inch. Can we do that? Yeah, I can fit that. All right, so we're going to say 1 inch equals... 25 pounds. So I'm going to take my ruler here and I'm going to go one, two, three. Make that solid. So this is three inches and then one inch equals 100. Oh, one inch equals 25 pounds. I've got three inches, so that'll get me 75 pounds, 140 degrees from east or to the horizon. Let's do, let's have you guys do one here. C. <clears throat> this will be a U try. And I've got vector Z. Notice how it's bold here. 30 miles per hour at a bearing of um, south 60 degrees west. All right. Let's start. Oh, so now here it is. Let's draw this here, and then I would like you to pause the video and try to do this on your own. North, east, south, west. Okay? Pause. Try to do this on your own. Okay. Hopefully you've uh, tried to do this on your own, and you feel good about it. So I start with south. Here's south. And then I go 60 degrees west. So here's west, 60 degrees this way, so that's about right there, I'd say. So I go 
60 degrees and 30 miles per hour so let's say each um, let's decide on a scale here so for my scale your scale might be different especially if you have um, centimeters um, which I don't on this particular ruler I have all of these different ways of measuring and none of them are centimeters that's all right still one of my favorite rulers 30 miles per hour so I need to say let's make each 10 miles is um, let's say half an inch so half an inch equals 10 miles you might say one inch equals 10 miles um, you know whatever whatever works for you but I already did three inches up there so I want to do something different so in order to get 10 miles I need one and a half inches in order to get 30 miles, sorry, not 10 miles. So in order to get 30 miles, I need three half inches, which is an inch and a half. So I'm going to find there's 10 miles there, 20 miles, and 30 miles. So each half inch is 10 miles. There's my vector. It is an inch and a half. and uh, that is how you do that and what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to break this lesson up into three parts so here's the first part and then um, I'm gonna just so that we have smaller size videos um, I'm gonna do the other two parts on um, subsequent videos